Now there are a number of ways to draw walls in Vectorworks. Um, the most easiest and obvious way would be the wall tool in the building shell tool set. The wall tool here. Now eventually we'll show you how to join and combine these walls here, but we'll just slide over to the side for now and do a fresh example. Now we'll zoom in a little bit and we'll choose a pretty standard wall style, something with a frame. Yeah, that's fine. Now, the first thing you'll notice when you go to start drawing a wall are these four modes. So if I go to start drawing the wall now, I'm drawing the line that is along the left side of the wall. And here we'll explain a little bit about what that means. See how when I have this wall selected, there's an arrow pointing down the wall. That's the direction of the wall. The wall is traveling from left to right in this instance. So the top is the left of the wall and the bottom is the right. Disable zoom line thickness for now. So if I go to the wall tool and I have this set to this mode, I'll be drawing with the left of that wall. If I set it to this mode, it'll draw the right side of that wall. This is important generally when you're tracing or if you have known values, if that's the interior dimension of the room or the exterior dimension of the room. So that'll let you control that directly. If you're drawing a little less commonly, you can draw with the center line. So it'll just go to the center of the entire thickness of the wall. Regardless of the components, it will just pick the center of the wall between the left and the right and draw it out that way. We'll go ahead and clear these out. And then a little more of advanced option in here is the offset mode. So if you want to offset where it's going to draw the wall slightly from the left or slightly from the right, you can do that as well. However, more commonly, you'll be drawing, if you're using architect and you'll be using wall styles, if you're using architect generally, you'll be drawing with the core component mode. If I click this mode and I start drawing, it's going to draw based on the center of the core component. So the center of the framing for this particular component it's going to draw from the center of that. And you could, of course, ch change this so you're drawing from the left of the core component. Or if I click this option, now I'm drawing from the right of the core component. Now, something you may have noticed already. If I start drawing with the wall tool, if I start drawing out different shapes, and I get a little far along, and I accidentally make a misstep, and I didn't mean to do that, I can press the delete key once, and each time I press the delete key on the keyboard, it will step back one step in my drawing. And if I hit escape, I can cancel the drawing entirely. But delete, if I draw a few moments and I don't finish the wall, delete will step me back once. When I want to finish, now the first click will start my wall network. Then I'll keep clicking, it'll just keep adding points for this wall to follow. But when I go in and finally go to this point, click either on the starting point or if I click and I don't want to finish out that area and I just want to stop drawing the walls, a simple double click will finish the wall drawing. And it will simply finish out the wall and it will place the wall object and now my tool is free to start drawing a new set of walls. Now that mode's fine, especially if you're going to be tracing or something like that, but I want to draw your attention to two problems here. One, see how this wall is a little crooked? That's very easy to get. And one, see how this is not quite joined as you would expect? We'll cover more about wall joins in another video, but I want to show you another mode of the wall tool that will simplify things a bit. In general, files in Vectorworks, and really any drawing, are going to have many rectangular rooms. You're not going to have a lot of models that don't include at least one rectangle. So up here in the wall tool, there's the rectangle mode button that will let you change the mode you draw in. So now we're drawing out an open rectangle every time we use the wall tool. And we can do that to draw in draw multiple rooms, but this doesn't just draw out a rectangle and then I have to, if I wanted to add more rooms in, I don't have to go here and then manually add them this way. I can keep using the rectangular mode and hover over one of these walls and you'll see it highlights in red and you'll see this other wall also highlights at the same time and it will intelligently draw out and join pieces for that room so I can keep going if I wanted to. Draw from here, draw to this network and it'll draw just my two interior walls, it'll just join to the existing walls. This is a much faster way of drawing out what usually ends up being the majority of your file, which will be rectangular shaped rooms. Focus on the rest of our objects here. Here we are. So as you can see, that was just drawing walls from scratch. But if I already have walls that exist, for instance, this is a wall. Most of these objects here, these are just different wall styles. I can interact with those directly. So we'll go to the wall tool. And we'll pick one of these interior walls. Double click. 
We can draw and just add a quick little room if we wanted to. Here we get the double red highlighting, click, and then it'll draw it out. Now, that's the basic of just drawing walls, but there's another few more accurate ways you could do it. Uh, we'll zoom out here, we'll move off to the side. And what we can do is, you might have seen this already, but instead of just drawing out, for instance, if I want to draw, I know a wall that I want it to be exactly five meters long. I don't need to just grab it and then slide it until that number hits five meters. I can just hit tab, type five, hit tab again. That will lock the length to five meters. So now in any direction that I click, I'm going to get a five meter wall. One click and it will finish that wall. Now if I want to go another five meters, but I know I want it to be exactly 45 degrees from that point, I can type in 45 and now I can go to either of the two 45s that are available in this circle from that original wall, basically 45 degrees off of it. Click again and then I can set my next distance. You can do it that way or if you just want to draw out the entire room, go to the rectangle mode and then when you're drawing out, it's going to ask you for the width and height. It'll say, see these icons on the floating data bar? That's delta X and delta Y. So if I want it to be 8 by 10, 8 and 10, tab, click. And there's my room. That's just a much faster way of drawing out rectangular walls. Generally, your rooms, you're going to have at least one rectangular room. That just makes life much easier. Now, the other type of wall, of, of way to create a wall is from a shape. So instead of using the rectangular mode, this can either just be a preference if it's just the way you want to do things, or it can be a very good way of tracing out objects. You can use the polygon tools instead. So if I have a relatively complicated shape, and I know that that's going to be the overall shape of my house. Uh, of course, it won't be three different shapes, so we'll take these all, select them all, add surface, and we have one contiguous polygon. If I go to AEC, create objects from shapes. In most workspaces, we're in architect right now, it's going to be AEC, create objects from shapes. In some of the other workspaces, you might see it in modify, convert, and you might see create objects from shapes somewhere in here. So just keep that in mind, but in most of the workspaces, it's AEC or landmark or spotlight, create objects from shapes. In here in particular, we're going to choose walls. Now, this next choice seems silly, but it is extremely important. If I were to pick center, it would draw each of the walls with their center line on this shape. If that's what you want, that's fine. That's rarely correct. Usually the shape you've drawn is either the exterior of all the rooms or the interior of all the rooms. So you'd want to pick a left or a right. So for instance, if we do a right, and we click OK, it'll draw it inside that perimeter. So it drew them all inside. If we undo that, we can go to AEC, create objects from shapes again. We'll choose walls again. And this time we'll choose left and it will draw it outside these shapes. There we are. And you might have noticed, so now what I have is 12 walls. I don't have any object left in here. So I'll undo this one more time and I'll color this object to make one more thing clear. If you go to AEC and create objects from shapes and then choose wall, it's going to ask you, we're going to do right again, that's fine, if you want to delete the source shapes, which is this blue shape we have here. Generally, it's fine to delete it and not use it anymore, but if you're going to be working with it constantly or you have a number of them that you want to work with and you want to keep them, just uncheck this and click OK. Now, you'll see that I had to redo that a few times. So if I now don't undo, if I just move these objects down off to the side, and I use AEC, create objects from shapes again, it's going to retain these settings the second time. That was just because I was going undo. It'll keep create objects from shape settings over and over in case you need to do multiple creations. 